I almost don't know how to express that this is gonna be a serious thing without making it a joke. <laughs> like, I've done fake serious videos a lot. <clears throat> But this is gonna be a real, actual, serious video today. I have something kind of heavy to talk about. It's also gonna be kind of long, but I ask that you please watch the whole thing because I've been writing this over and over again and saying it in my head for years, and it might kind of be the most important video that I've ever made. And because of that, a lot of you who might be watching this might not normally watch my videos, so Hi. You might know me from working with the Harry Potter Alliance, or my Will It Waffle videos, or your Tumblr dashboard, or maybe we even know each other in real life. Maybe you're someone who met me at a conference a while back and took my business card but only recently emailed me and are now watching this in awkward confusion. Hi. Welcome. Strap yourselves in for a wild ride. So, I have made a handful of LGBTQ related videos over the years, like educational 101s, and because of those I have received so many letters and messages from all of you, my regular supporters, thanking me for making those videos, and saying how you've shown them to family and how they've helped you come out or feel better about yourself, and I mean, first of all, that's just completely overwhelming and, and humbling, and I'm so glad that I could help in any way, and I'm so proud and happy for each one of you. But reading those messages and, and listening to you over the years, I've never felt worthy. Like, I've almost felt like a fraud. You know, you're being so open with me and like, yeah, I make educational videos or I make stupid videos about my awkward life or, you know, waffles, but I don't ever get real with you. And I think an important part of growing and learning together is sharing stories. And I could share so many more funny and awkward stories if I let myself get a little real with you. So that's what we're doing today. So. When I was a kid, if you had asked my relationship to my brother, I would have said sister. If you had asked my relationship to my parents, I would have said daughter. But if you asked the kids in my class to line up boys and girls, I went with the boys. If you asked me if I preferred going to my Girl Scout meeting or tagging along to my brother's Cub Scout one, I would have said Cub Scouts. Except for picture days and piano recitals, which were horrific screaming matches that always ended in spankings, I exclusively wore my brother's hand-me-downs. In fact, I don't think I ever even stepped foot into the girls' section of a clothing store as a small child. When the girls tried to get me to play with them at recess because they knew I was supposed to be with them, I always just thought they were flirting with me, honestly. I didn't understand why I wasn't allowed to have short hair when my brother, who actually begged to have his hair grown out, got regular crew cuts. I genuinely did not understand that I was really a girl until the summer after fourth grade when an incident of being mistaken for a boy in front of my mom led me to realize how embarrassed she actually was by my confusing gender appearance. I didn't want her to be ashamed of me, so the next day I made her take me to the mall and we bought short shorts and baby doll t-shirts, lip gloss and necklaces. I started actually trying to do things with the long hair that she wouldn't let me cut. And the next year at school, I was one of the first ones in my grade to have a boyfriend, and I even willingly wore a skirt on the first day of sixth grade. But after a bit, I got bored. I was tired of not being myself, so I started dressing how I wanted again. But unfortunately, the miracle of puberty was blossoming, and my hips weren't quite fitting into boys' pants anymore, and all of my guy friends were suddenly a foot taller than me. And one day backstage of a play, after being put through hair and makeup, I caught a glance of myself in the mirror and for the first time in my life I realized that I was actually kind of a pretty girl. I didn't recognize myself, it didn't feel like me, but objectively that was a pretty girl looking back at me. I wasn't sure what to do with that information for a while, but as high school started I decided I wanted to fit in and have a boyfriend and to do that I had to be a typically pretty girl, or at least that's what I thought was true at the time. And I thought if I was going to make that effort I was going to be the best girl that I could be. And I was still pretty awkward with things for a while, but by the time I graduated high school I'd gotten the hang of it. I had a string of boyfriends, I was happy, I had the kind of confidence that comes with being accepted and praised for achieving society's standards. You know, in a lot of ways it was great, but it wasn't me. It didn't feel like me, it felt like a game. A game I was winning, and which gave me a lot of pride to be winning, but I wasn't playing the game as me. Figuring out how to continue the balancing act of who I feel I am and who society tells me I should be has become harder and harder as I've started my professional life. I'm being gendered in so many new ways and I'm meeting so many people who are putting all of these gendered assumptions on me. For example, one place I spoke at recently literally referred to me in promotional materials as a digital diva. Ugh. And like, I couldn't ask them to change it because then I would be acting like a diva. Ugh. <laughs> Navigating all of this has been uncomfortable 
and confusing and distressing. I try to distract myself with my work, but when you're a spokesperson and a video creator, you are confronted with how you look and how people perceive you on a daily basis. I'm still being labeled and treated in ways that don't conform to how I actually feel inside. Ellen Page said when she came out, I'm tired of lying by omission. And that's how I feel. There have been a lot of other things I've had to keep quiet by virtue of not being open about this. Not anything big, but just the constant second guessing and fear and this running track in the back of my mind of making sure that people don't find out but also not really wanting to lie about things and I'm sick of that. I just want to be me all the time without having to think about everything. So with all of that said, I am transgender. Yep. Okay. Set it on the internet now. So that's that. Can't put that smoke back in the jar. Cool. Break open the gummy bears now. Did the hard part. Now oh, I'm hungry. Everyone's gonna stop watching now anyways. For anyone who is not familiar with exactly what that means, it's basically everything I just said before. I have always had an innate sense that I'm a guy. From my very earliest memories, I looked at men in TV shows and movies and the world around me and thought that I would grow up to look like them. I even used to imagine how I would style my beard when I grew up. I always identified with boy characters in books. And until puberty, I never even gave any of that a second thought. It just was what it was. I've tried dealing with this in a lot of different ways. Presenting in different ways, compromising, like I can be a tomboy but I have to wear girl clothes, or I can wear men's clothes but only if I have long hair. I have desperately tried to force it away, but it never goes away. It always comes back, and it always comes back stronger, and it's disturbing my life to the point that I've put off doing things. I've avoided things I used to love. I've stopped planning my future because I can't do or even envision myself doing those things while being perceived by the rest of the world to be someone that I'm not. So I have started transitioning. Moving forward, you can call me Jackson or Jack. That's one of the names my mom had picked out for me if I'd been male assigned at birth. My pronouns are he, him, his. Please do not ever call me ma'am or lump me in as one of the ladies. I am not a woman and especially not a lady. I know that all of this can take some time to adjust to, especially if you know me in real life. I will be patient, I promise, even though I will point out that I have been being patient for 25 years. And if you are someone who knows me in the meat world and are thinking I maybe should have told you one-on-one -on -one instead of through this video, I'm sorry. Believe it or not, coming out is kinda hard. And I wanted to cut down on how many times I had to do it by just making this video and pulling off the band-aid in one go. And honestly, this is such a personal thing and I am not a personal sharing type of person that I wish I didn't have to share it. But as I go through transition, people will notice and I would like people to refer to me and perceive me in the right way, so I have to share it. But to make it feel a little less like an obligation that I can't escape, I've been reminding myself of how important it is for people to share their stories and experiences. And it's important to me that I'm honest because I have to acknowledge that I weirdly have kind of a slight platform right now. And to not use that is selfish to me. Because when I was growing up, I didn't have any trans people in my life. There was no information available to me. There was no one like me on TV. The few examples I saw of anything were sensational headlines and crude one-off jokes, characters that were heavily stereotyped and existed only as pathetic punchlines. That representation told me that I was a freak a mutant, and that I should do everything I could to hide how I felt, or else I'd be at best never taken seriously, and at worst locked up somewhere, or even murdered. There was no positivity. There was no example of nuance or complexity. There was no basic education. I went to college believing that the terms sex and gender were synonymous, that bisexuality wasn't real, and I had never even heard of non-binary genders. That lack of information and poor media representation had a horrific and long-lasting effect on me. So I've decided to be open about who I am because if even one person can see themselves in me or get a bit more comfort and understanding in their own identity or just feel less alone, then it's worth it. Because I didn't have that for a long time and I'm not gonna continue to be part of the problem. As my former boss, role model, and immigration activist Jose Antonio Vargas always says, it's not coming out, it's letting you in. And that's kind of what I wanted to do with this video. I wanna let you all in on a big, 
important part of my life. And while making this video is certainly daunting, overall, I am happier and more excited than I can ever remember being in my life. As I've begun transitioning and telling people close to me, it's been like this huge weight has been lifted off of my shoulders. I have been euphoric to the point of annoyance, I am sure. Other people in my life have been commenting that I'm more confident, more myself, less anxious. I even have less headaches. It's like being open with yourself is some sort of miracle drug. And most importantly, I'm not ashamed anymore. I used to be so scared of being embarrassed by people knowing this about me, but I'm not anymore. It's just who I am, and I have no reason to be ashamed about it. And if anyone is gonna try to put me down about it, I don't care. I really have better things to do in my life than give a fuck about people trying to bring me down because of their own hangups. So, can we just like all take a deep breath together now? <sighs> Wow, okay. So if any of you have more technical questions, I'm putting a whole bunch of resources down in the description box. I will probably do at least one follow-up video answering some questions, though nothing intrusive. I will be changing my username on all of my social media, like today or tomorrow, but I'm just changing the name, so if you already follow me, you don't need to like follow a new account or anything like that, you're good to go. And yeah, I mean, I might be talking about gender a lot more now. In fact, there are a lot of videos specifically that I want to make, because now that I can talk about my experiences uncensored, there is a lot that I want to to say, the floodgates have opened. This channel will still mostly be waffles, don't worry. If you want the full dose, you are welcome to follow my second channel, also The Bird, where I'll be posting a whole bunch more trans stuff, probably. I don't know, this is new. I don't really know what I'm doing yet. Okay, guys? Okay. And to those of you who are regular followers and have been around since I was posting sexuality and gender videos on the HPA channel since 2011, <laughs> Yeah, go back and watch some of those and read in between the lines now. All of you have been so supportive of me recently, even though you haven't had a clear idea of what's been going on with me. You are the ones that have given me the courage to come out. Seeing you stick up for me, whether it's people debating my gender and sexuality in the comments or BuzzFeed allegedly stealing my video concepts, seeing you consistently come to the rescue means the world. And hearing your stories and seeing your own journeys when you come up to me at conferences and stuff, that's a big part of what has given me the strength to get to this point. And I know that no matter what, at least in my core community online, I have a supportive and safe space. Not everyone is so lucky, and I do not take that for granted. So from the absolute bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you. On my lunch break, I almost started crying Cause it really does get better if you wait And there are times now when I still feel afraid But gone are the times when I feel ashamed And so for all the kids that really have it pretty bad